everybody. Welcome back for my third video in my series for Redondo Beach, California. And today I am at the historic Redondo Beach Pier. It's an attraction that goes all the way back to the late 1880s, which originally started as a wharf even before Redondo Beach became an incorporated city in 1892. The first official pier goes back to the year 1916 and has been remodeled, renamed, and redeveloped many times throughout the years until the 1990s. It is now the city's seventh generation pier today in a horseshoe shape that attracts millions of visitors every year. The pier offers views of the Redondo Beach coastline, and then on the other end, it offers views of the International Boardwalk. Not only does the pier preserve historic figures of the past, but it also memorializes modern day stars and legends. There are plenty of photos of the pier's history and construction all over the place, and believe it or not, they are still putting up more. It's another great place to watch the sunset at its many different lookout spots, and it's another great place to well lit up at night and to enjoy some nightlife. There are many murals and artwork all over the walls, and without a doubt, the pier is another great place to have many different kinds of food, but it's the only place in the area where you can have some deep fried Oreos and Oreo churros. Keep watching and I'll tell you all where. But before I get more specific with the food and the pier itself, I do want to talk about some very important places in the area and the best ways to get here. is by passing through the International Boardwalk, which is another beautiful place that's full of shops and restaurants. It's roughly a 10 minute walk to the pier with the fact that the two are connected. My other favorite way takes just a little bit longer. If you wanna to travel to the pier from the Esplanade or the Riviera Village, it's about a 20 minute walk if you decide to take the walking trail that goes right along the beach. Before you reach the pier, there's a very important park located right next to it called Veterans Park which offers some of the best photo opportunities. What makes this park so important is of course to honor all of the brave men and women that have served in the U.S. Armed Forces, but also what stood here before it was even a park. When Redondo Beach built its first wharf in the late 1880s, it was the first city with a port in all of Los Angeles County. Ships and trains were not only bringing in oil and lumber, but also thousands of people to the area with the sole purpose of making many of these visitors stay longer, to bring in tourism, and to develop the city into a resort destination, the Hotel Redondo was built a few years later in 1890, which had 225 rooms, a golf course, a ballroom, tennis courts, many ocean views, and so much more. By the time the hotel had closed in 1925, the city had already grown dramatically and developed in both population and tourism. There's an information display located in the middle of the park today for anyone that is interested in learning more about the Hotel Redondo. And the building that now stands where the hotel once stood is the former library that was built in 1930. So overall, Veterans Park is not just any park, it's a park that once held the hotel that first started the tourism industry here in Redondo Beach. Before I go on the pier, I do want to talk about one more nearby place I suggest you visit before stopping by. If you decide to drive or use transportation, then you will definitely come across California's famous street known as Pacific Coast Highway, which has many businesses, restaurants, and coffee shops. The pier itself has all of those, except for one, which is a really good coffee house. So the one I suggest is called Platch, which is located just two blocks away on Pacific Coast Highway and has plenty of places to sit both indoors and outdoors. One of the best selling drinks is the creme brulee latte. If you like hazelnut and chocolate mixed together, go with the Hazy Days drink. 
If you're a gold digger, then you'll probably like the golden latte, which is a turmeric oat milk latte made with honey, sprinkled with cinnamon, and no coffee at all. They have plenty of pastries to choose from, and the most popular is the cinnamon twist. If you decide to walk to the pier from there, then you certainly can't miss the big sign that many people drive under and pass by to get here. One of the first things you can do when you get to the pier is go on the upper deck where you can have views of both the beach and Veterans Park. A few steps away, you have more views of both the shops and restaurants stretching all the way to the walkway and the northern end of the pier. As for shops, I do want to mention one located at the start of the pier which is called Chick at the Beach. It's full of shirts, sweaters, and souvenirs. This is where I got my shirt from, so that means I also advise you to check it out if you want a nice shirt or a souvenir. The pier has plenty of more souvenir shops and many great places for a dessert. Check out World Churros if you want a hot churro in your caramel or hot fudge sundae. If you want your sundae with some espresso, go with the affogados. If you're in the mood for gelato, Bella Gelato has plenty of that. I got two scoops of both Nutella and espresso bean. Across is Charlie's Place where you can get some deep fried Oreos and Oreo churros. If you like funnel cakes, they have those too topped with vanilla ice cream and strawberries. You can have any of those sitting down and looking outside. If you're walking from the beach, you can check out Jaden's Snow which will be one of the first places you come across. They have many different types of boba tea and the taro flavor will always be my favorite. Surfing was brought over to the mainland of the United States from Hawaii in 1907 and started in Redondo Beach because of a legendary man named George Freeth. He was brought over by a man named Henry Huntington who was promoting and adding more tourism to the city. In front of the Hotel Redondo, George would give surfing demonstrations and would be known as the man who can walk on water. Nearby at another attraction known as the Saltwater Plunge, he would demonstrate both diving and lifeguard techniques. With this achievement, George became the very first official lifeguard in California history. His statue has been around since 1976 and is visited by many surfers from all around the world today to pay their respects. So overall, if you enjoy surfing, or at least like learning about the culture, this statue is a must during your visit to the pier. Exploring the majority of the shops and restaurants, make your way to the very end on the southern side of the pier where you have more great views and can spot many fishermen at almost any time during the day. If you don't have a fishing pole, there's a shop just steps away that allows you to rent one. Next door is the Redondo Coffee Shop on the pier, which is the only restaurant on the pier that serves breakfast and it was amazing. If you're a fan of the TV show from the early 2000s called The O.C., they filmed many scenes on both the pier and in the restaurant itself. Be sure to notice the autograph photo that's hung up on the wall that were signed by many of the characters themselves.
After you pass by the restaurant and turn the corner, there is a big open walkway that will lead you to more areas of the pier. One is going down a different way full of more places to eat that will eventually lead you back to where you started. When you get here, check out the legendary restaurant known as Old Tony's, which is also a landmark that has been around since 1952. Inside is a fire pit, plenty of places to sit with a water view, they have a beautiful bar area, and another one upstairs that offers 360 degree views. If you decide to dine or drink up there, then you will notice the many photos on the walls of all the famous people that have been there. They are well known for both their crab cakes and the seafood combinations served with shrimp, scallops, salmon, and swordfish. Be sure to get them with their famous Tony's cheese bread for a good appetizer. And then for dessert, I suggest the chocolate mousse or the chocolate blackout cake. So if you keep going down the walkway, you'll get some different views of the pier on both sides and it's also the closest you can get to enjoying a nice colorful sunset. All the way at the end is another restaurant called Kincaid's that has an outdoor patio with more waterfront dining and lots of paintings inside. The most popular appetizer is the crispy calamari, then I recommend either getting the chop house burger, the french dip sandwich, or the barbecue ribs. Their best selling dessert is the key lime pie, but I also recommend their chocolate molten lava cake. Whether you dine with a view of the water in the day or a view of the lights at night, it's a win-win situation. After when you pass or dine at Kincaid's, the only remaining thing to do on the pier is get a good view of both the breakwater and the International Boardwalk, where you can have some more good food, go on many different water activities, and see a lot more art, which will all be in my very next and last video for my Redondo Beach series. Stay tuned for both the International Boardwalk and the King Harbor coming out very soon.